Hi guys, and welcome back to another Sean the Buffalo video. Hope you've all been well. And today we have brought the big snake out once again. Sounds dubious. Um, so we all know that the best deck in the format at the moment is Mew V Max, correct? Are we right? Yes, most certainly the deck is like way, way overpowered um, and it is primarily because of Genesect. Uh, it's not because of Mu V Max, like don't kid yourself about that. It is only because of Genesect. But this deck, with the way that it's built, is not only hitting Mu V Max for weakness, but we have a direct, or you know, potentially direct counter to the Genesect in the Galarian Weezing. And because of the fact that Eternatus V Max itself does allow us to play eight bench Pokemon due to its effect Eternal Zone, we can have, you know, our many Galarian Weezings as backup without having to worry about all the Crobats on the bench and all the rest of it. So, this deck is like criminal against Mew VMAX, realistically. Um, and, you know, providing you can play right and things. We've even got a little bit, uh, because sometimes the matchups can be close if the Mew VMAX players draw like a god, which can happen. Um, we sometimes have, like, a little bit of issue with just making certain that we definitely want, want to beat them. And that's why we've included a single copy of Final Waves in here. As you may have seen with other Eternatus VMAX builds, they usually only play, well, they usually play the maximum count of four boss. We're playing three and a half boss because we not only plan to sometimes stick our opponents in the active, uh, in the active using Galarian Mine, or Galarian, sorry, and the Galarian Weezing combo, which is then short enough for our opponent's abilities and the carbon tree, therefore giving us more time to establish our own board. But we, we play three and a half boss, as I was saying, because we need a way to retreat out of Gallimine ourselves sometime. And for that, we have Escape Rope, which can sometimes act like a mediator of a boss, in a sense, where you can obviously grab a Pokemon off your opponent's bench, especially if you're not going to be able to take a, a knockout on the active anyway. So there's that. And then we can accelerate additional energies into play ourselves through the combo of... Galarian Moltres V, which has Dire Flame Wings, where once during your turn, at your turn, you can attach a Dark Energy from your discard pile to this Pokemon. You can only use it once per turn. Unfortunately, it's not like uh, Darkrai GX, where you can just keep reviving them from the uh, from the discard and digging them up like mad zombies, and they keep attaching energies to themselves. Unfortunately, it's like it's the best replacement we've got to Darkrai GX, basically. And through the application of Energy Switch. Having this being able to get a free energy from the discard pile means that we can then energy switch onto an Eternatus and power it up out of nowhere and hit for Dread End for X amount of however many cards we have on the bench times 30. So the maximum output of it is 270. Now, 270 doesn't realistically one-shot any of the VMAXs at the moment uh, other than things that you're obviously hitting for weakness. And that's another big uh, part of why Galarian Weezing comes into play because it's only minor chip damage, but that 40 plus the 110 uh, plus the potential 270, and sometimes if your opponent can't retreat out of the poison, it can be 80. That 40 and 80 makes a different makes a big difference when it comes to two shot and things because they effectively count as a one shot anyway because you're only losing a one prize card Pokemon when they finally get rid of Reason to clear up their abilities again. But then they've lost so much damage from the poison. Was it really worth it? Because you're just going to come in and sweep them out of Eternatus anyway. So, that's all for the deck list anyway. Um, you know, the rest of it is just standard things that you'd expect from Eternatus, like your eight ball search cards. Um, we don't have Ultra Ball yet, but this deck's only going to be get, uh, going to get better when uh, Brilliant V-Stars uh, comes out, because most of those Pokemon are going to have 270 HP. So this is like the V-Star Killer, um, or it will be the V-Star Killer. And then, obviously couple of switches to maneuver about the board, uh, the stadiums, we have some additional draw support arena here as well because Paths of the Peak can be a nuisance. And then obviously four Marnie, four Research, two Hidden Energy for Retreat, and seven Basic Dark Energy. So yeah, that's all for the deck list and we'll be right back for some games. So we're against uh, a, a potentially a Mew deck, so this would be exactly where my theory of this being super good against Mew can be put into effect. Uh, well, not when we get a mulligan, despite the fact that we play like uh, 14 basics. It's uh, highly unusual, and we better not get more than one, because uh, PTCG RNG. Can't wait for that PTCG live. 
Hopefully they'll have a better RNG on that game. Because it doesn't seem like there's anything random about having 14 basics in your deck. It, that's just stupid. <laughs> that's just stupid, that is. My opponent's taken about nine years to set up his, uh, set up his bench. Uh, we could potentially get donked here. Um, and we would love a quick ball to be able to get into this game. <laughs> My opponent taking about nine years. So he does start with Genesect. And we're not going to put our stadium down straight away. Um, we will grab a coffin. I will prefer to keep the coffin. I'm pretty certain. Just in case my opponent can't pull off the whole um, Wombo combo thing. Although, that being said, we may be able to take a knockout of Glaring Moltres V next turn, so yeah, I will just put this here and attach and pass turn. So it's not a brilliant opening hand. You make you make do with what you've got, I suppose. And let's see how many battle passes my opponent can find. It might not even be a purely um, me V Max Genesect deck, but we shall see. So he's got the Mew, already discarded the Power Tablet, that's good for us to see. And because of where he is at the moment, he's most certainly not using the Meloetta combo. So my opponent's hand wasn't great either, it would seem. And he's wasting another Power Tablet just to draw another card. And he does manage to find himself a quick ball, <laughs> so he's quite lucky in that regard. And he will draw up to three with Genesect. Can he find himself any battle passes? I'm still curious about what this last card in hand is. It might actually be an Elisa. So there's his battle pass. So I'm going to find, I think this card right here is definitely an Elisa. Yep, so we knew that was coming. And is he going to do it onto these two? Very risky play, considering what I've literally got on the bench right there. And he does obviously retreat for the turn. So, we have this. We unfortunately are just going to have to Marnie. And with any luck, we might just be able to get the coffin into play. Now, I'm thinking what card I want to lose here. And I think I don't mind losing the switch because, oh, it's hard. We play three energy switch anyway, I'm pretty certain. So I will discard this, and we'll get ourselves our lovely Crobat V. And I realise now why I needed to uh, bump out staging, but it's not a problem. I'd rather out staging my opponent, he'll probably replace that himself at some point. And we do have another replacement staging there, if really need be. Um, so we'll grab the coffin. Grab the Weezing which is what we was really looking for. And I will put this other coffin into play because we can empty our hand out and Rose Tower for free next turn anyway. And we'll just grab this, uh, this Crowbat just in case. And we'll just start to establish our board behind, uh, behind ability lock. If my opponent comes in with me VMAX, uh, I've literally got the whole, you know, energy switch and energy Rose Tower, Crowbat for six. Well, add Rose Tower for two first, potentially thinning my deck out of two playable cards, and then draw further with Crowbat.
So now we do need to replace this because I don't want to be taking any more damage. He didn't play anything last turn. And I am going to energy switch onto this, uh, this energy now onto here. Just so we've got them ready to go. And I think actually I'm just going to hold the hand. Severe poison again. My opponent must have uh, Alisa's and um, some other stuff in uh, some other stuff in hand. What the other things that I'm thinking of? Uh, well, I'm glad he's burnt that for no effect. He's doing that just draw a card, which is fine. My taunting on there will not matter too much. Uh, it does mean he can kill off one of my uh, many B Pokemon, but if we find the boss first, that is an unfortunate draw. So now we're just going to aggress. Um, discard these. Hmm. I will quick ball away this energy. Grab another Galarian Moltres out of the deck, potentially. Actually, I don't think I'm going to grab anything here because I might be using research next turn, which means I need to keep those last Pokemon in my deck for the full, um, full bench. And we do take a knockout with Glare and Reason. So my opponent's probably holding on to a boss's orders, which is fine, but we're just going to come straight in with a turn to speed max anyway. So take our two prizes. And... The worst thing that could happen is my opponent does, for whatever reason, play a Marnie. Um, if that's the case, I'm not really fussed. He's only going down to two prizes anyway, and we're going to go down to another three. And with both of these having an energy on them, we are in an absolutely fine position. The evolution of that seems risky. Uh, he made Rose Tower for one. Uh, so I was going to take knockout of this. That is uh, most understandable. So my opponent goes down to five. We're going to go down to three. And we get another basic energy in the discard as well. I might even just keep both these turn sisters alive as well. And I'm not gonna bother doing that. We've got the retreat with the Hyden energy regardless. So I am just gonna Marnie here, conserve my hand, conserve some resources. We're down. We've got a crowbot prized. Not a fan. And we need to put this down most certainly. Can evolve this. The truth here. Take the knockout. We have the perfect hand to. Uh, well, we've got game next turn anyway on either of these. So we need some Elisa and energy here to be able to attack with this. And then again, he'd also need Marnie. So having this down is our fail safe to be able to um, attach next turn because no my opponent he'll techno blast here or you know melodious echo. <clears throat> and I don't see how my opponent can escape this. I have no idea what my opponent's looking for. I'm sure he didn't cram a massive for a rope on phone because that would make no sense <laughs> if you're trying to dig for cards. So, is my opponent Alisa here? I can't remember. I wasn't paying attention. Um, Oh, 
went too far. Did my opponent play Elisa? Doesn't seem like he did. So there was no hope of him winning this game. That being said, we are currently 10 damage short. But my opponent is also I'm pretty certain not able to take a knockout. And in fact, because we have two boss in hand. The best thing to do would be able to, uh, to take out this Meloetta uh, because then he definitely can't win next turn because of the amount of power tablets he's already used because uh, he's used two already. He definitely would not be able to win next turn. So I'm going to keep that energy switch in hand because it will allow me to retreat if need be. Dread end here. And then he's forced to evolve that other Mew Max on the bench as well. That Crowbat off the prizes was exactly what I needed. Or any basic Pokemon. But can you see how this matchup has become closer than it should have been due to the fact that he had Meloetta um, as a one prize card attacker. That is one of Mew's, uh, Mew VMAX or the Fusion Strike Box's most potent weapons. The fact that they can output so much damage with a one prize card attacker it just seems unrealistic. It's very unnerving. It shouldn't be possible, but it is. It's a thing. And there we have it. Um, so that's all there is to that, really. But so this is showcasing that um, obviously a while back at the start of this game, we had that glare and wheezing in the active, and it had my opponent shut down for so long that we was obviously, despite having a clunky opening hand, which didn't even have an alternatives in it, uh, we started with literally a glare and Moltres and an attachment. We managed to establish our board into a state where this is our end game board now. So, still waiting for my opponents to do anything. <clears throat> and I'm really wondering what my opponent thinks his options are. So, at least he managed to dodge this, but. It's, now he's just burning cards, I'm trying to figure a way out, I'm trying to hit some power tablets I would imagine. But he can't even Melodious Echo anymore, so it, like, it really doesn't matter. There is nothing he can do. Because next turn, like if he attacks with the new VMAX, which is his only attacker, we have Dire Flame Wings with the energy there. And then Crowbat didn't even need that because we're going to die flame wings the energy back. But say for example, if he managed to crush an, uh, crush an hammer away and um, an energy or something or other, then that would have been potentially bad. But we'll get our last Pokemon to play just to make sure that we're hitting the correct numbers, which I knew we were anyway. But 420, 420, and. The, uh, the end of Mew VMAX. <laughs> so this is how all your Mew VMAX uh, matches should go, where you're basically just like sitting behind Glary and Weasling for a bit. Um, anyway, we will be back for the next game. So we're back for game two, and we do manage to win the coin flip. So of course, with it primarily being an evolution deck, we do want to go first. And here we're going to Great Ball before we Quick Ball, you know, for correct sequencing. Why take a Pokemon out your deck? with Quick Ball when we can do this. So we can discard this, because we can get it back with Die Flame Wings anyway. Grab our Return System to play. And the reason why we do this is to reduce the effects of Crushing Hammer a little bit. Um, because realistically my opponent would need four crushing hammers to get rid of two energy based on a 50-50 ratio. 
Um, not all decks play Crushing Hammers, and it's very unusual for our Rapid Strike Urshifu that is, for whatever reason, playing Metal. I don't know what's going on here. This must be a Duraludon deck of some sort. Um, so I found it out a relatively decent hand, to be honest. But is he just going to outright lose his Asian to this attack here? Could be possible. I don't know why my opponent's doing that. And I don't know why... Oh, well, yeah, I've got... Resistance. Intrepid Swords. That is so... Such a strange deck, this. Um, we've got more switch outs than... Then we've got... Energy switch out so I think we will be just fine attaching this here and yeah there we go we do find I'm, I'm pretty upset by the fact that I didn't <laughs> try to attack with the Galarian Weezing as it were but it's what it is and we'll dread end and because we've only got one turn system in play as well, um, there's our energy switch. It does mean that we're not taking a cracker's amount of, uh, what are they called, uh, GMAX Rapid Flow, is it? Yeah, GMAX Rapid Flow. So opponent absolutely on it with the pure amounts of subbles and all sorts. It's a bit of a... It's a bit of a strange deck this, but you know, it does the job clearly. Uh, you must be playing Energy Switch of some variety. This is like, um, you know, the equivalent of Galarian Moltres with this. So, hats off to my opponent for deck creativity at the very least. Uh, because it, obviously it runs Metal Saucer as well, and metal, you can Metal Saucer and then Energy Switch. <clears throat> so... Does he take out the coffin or does he put the damage on here? And I do have to wonder what my opponent has in hands. I'm wondering if he gets himself a stadium here. Or just goes for another Drizzile. Or does he get the Sobble? So he's leaving himself Drizzilus. Uh, or the inability to use Drizzile. So, yeah, he uses GMAX Rapid one, uh, which is to be expected. It's very, a very unfortunate circumstance. And it might just be better here to... Attach here... Do we want to use this energy switch? I don't think we do. Oh, that's an unfortunate draw. Um, okay, so. Ball's not looking disgraceful per se. Get some more coffins into play. Find ourselves another healthy Eternatus. And we don't know if my opponent even plays Path to the Peak. It's very un uh, unlikely. But I would like a Gallimine right now. Oh, well, I played Rose Tower anyway, so yeah, we'll just play this down. And do you know what? We'll actually uh, force that back, so that's a good place to be in. He now has to have the other Rapid Strike energy in hand. Or we'll draw into it. Which is totally fine by me because then this will go up to 80. If he takes knockout on this, I have plenty of energy in play to be able to make the whole energy switch wombo combo and potentially get into some 
additional things. I think he totally forgot about this, which he did. And he didn't even uh, bother to do that, which was unusual. So, now do we just put the damage here um, and neutralizing gas there as well? I think we do, but we need to find out how many bosses we've used first. Like, we don't want to play it too slow, if you know what I mean. So, obviously these are going to be his attackers in this matchup. So that's already taken 18 now as well. So we need some additional damage on here. Let's see if he can retreat this either. Totally stuck with. Um, <laughs> he's just mining the attachment to this just so we can draw a card of Rose Tower to get anything good out of it. Now, Escape Rope. Another unfortunate loss, it would seem. I am just going to and switch off this onto here. And loses. Now is the time to look for the other boss. Um, just thinking what my play should be. I think until we can find a boss, which we're in down the one, we stick our hand as it is. We could even potentially bot in one of these next turn, so we can't in, in one turn just get rid of this. So, yeah, we're just going to severe poison again. We basically want to be one shot in this. Um, okay, so it gets rid of poison just to draw. These things are fine. So, another energy onto here. Going to discard a Marnie. Get a Crobat. Switch here. And even if he has some sort of energy denial shenanigans, I am just going to retreat again anyway for now. Gonna crow up for two, I think. Yeah, because we do. We're gonna just get rid of this as well. Because um, we don't want my opponent drawing any more cards off the Rose Tower. Didn't unfortunately get any closer to our Eternus Mysterious Eternus Speed Map, because we have no idea where that is. So apparently delayed the inevitable uh, And if he comes swinging in with Zation as well, it's only going to gain him two prize cards. So I put this up, obviously. No misplays to be had here. We was, oh, I was somewhat expecting that escape rope, which is exactly why I was also trying to dig for that other glaring wheezing, so I'd have one on the bench. And now I think we just start attaching here. And we will switch again, I think. Do we? No, because we really want our boss, so... I'm even going to hold the energy, I think. No, I'll attach it here. We've got... We've got things to do. 
We've got time to wait. We, we need a boss, basically. Just to boss this in. That's all we want. Because you can't drizzle aisle anymore anyway. After benching this. Don't know why my opponent did that. We have yet another energy. I don't want to play any more cards either. Because we have 13 cards in total to work with. If he, for whatever reason, lets the station go down, he is most likely going to end up being um, bossed in again. So, just keep out of the neutral guard. And now, if he doesn't have a switch, uh, this gets knocked out going into my turn, which is very, very good for me, because it allows me to find potentially another return to VMAX off my prizes, maybe even a boss. So, that's where we stand with this. Uh, prizes, let's have a look. So there's the boss. And now we just have game. So, this game was literally all about Galarian Weezing. Like, how absolutely insane is this card? And um, we'll give my opponent a well played. And we'll absolutely annihilate this thing. Galarian Weezing, ladies and gentlemen. Taking the lives of Drizzyles all day, every day. Uh, shady dealings, more like no dealings. Ma 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 ma. Uh, we'll be right back for the next game. So we're back for game three. Um, luckily, we win the coin flip once again, which uh, only works in our favour, as I was saying before. The hand is not great, and I'm actually going to save my. Great ball until next turn. I would rather wait a turn to play it than to play it right now, where it doesn't benefit me at all. I'm just going to pass. See what my opponent's got for me. He's playing a dark deck himself. Is he playing a Crobat VMAX deck? He's playing an Eternsus deck, so Eternsus matchups being what they are. Um, seems like he's bricking as bad as me, it would seem anyway, I'm not entirely certain on that, but he doesn't do anything, so this is why we saved the Great Balls. We'll attach here, we'll put this into play, we'll Great Ball, and we potentially could have knockout on this right now. So there's our turn to Speedmax. Can this get us a crowbar? Um, no, it can't. What do we need? We need another healthy turn to carry on this game. So we'll go here. And we'll even keep the glare into the as well. I'd rather just have a ping on a bench if my opponent. So my opponent gets like a lucky escape, you may say. My opponent does my <laughs> my thing of running a fan of waves, which is a very good shout. Unfortunately, will not help him this time. And that's a well played to my opponent. And we'll give this to my viewers now because this is, and we even drew the quick ball as well. So we, we have the energy in hand, but yeah. Um, that is the last code that I actually currently have for my viewers. So hopefully one of you can nab it and get something good out of it. That has been all for Eternatus VMAX, just the quick three matches. So that's all for the video. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you've all enjoyed my content recently and hope you've all been getting good cards from the codes I've been giving out in my videos. If you do enjoy my content, please like all the videos, please subscribe to the channel, and if you feel like some of my content, especially particularly the competitive content, might, may help some of your friends, please share it amongst your friends as well. It would help me out a lot, and potentially would hopefully in the future help other players out as well. I've been Sean the Buffalo, and thank you for watching. Peace out, guys.